physicsninja.org. Good evening, physics students. How are you? I've got a really good problem for you tonight. Today we're going to look at the equivalent resistance of a cube. So I'll have a look at it. I've plotted a cube here. I've got 12 resistors along each edge of the cube. They're all going to have the same value. And the question is, how can I simplify this complicated network of resistors into something that looks very, very simple? The little case I've drawn here at the bottom into one equivalent resistor where I've combined all the resistors of the cube. This is a hard problem and I know what you're thinking. Who comes up with these things? I don't know. Um, but anyway, I'm going to teach you how to solve that problem. So here we go. Okay, so in order to try to obtain what the equivalent resistance of the entire cube is, um, let's consider just a simple picture. So again, if I connect this cube, which has an equivalent resistor to some battery V, the voltage across the equivalent resistor is simply given by Ohm's law, and I can obtain the value of the current flowing into the cube. Now, Let's have a look a, a little bit more closely what's going on here. So I've got a current I flowing into junction A. And now that branches off into three different segments. If you follow one of those segments, for example, the one that leads to point C, now the junction at point C leads to two different branches. And I could do that, for example, even at point F. Point F now will split off into two branches as does the case for the junction labeled H. That also branches off into two different branches. What then happens is two branches will combine into one, and then the final three will then recombine so we have the same current flowing out of this uh, cube resistor. So it's a little bit hard to visualize sometimes in three dimensions. So what I've tried to do is I tried to flatten the circuit here. I tried to redraw this three-dimensional shape in two dimensions. And in order to do that, I had to have, I introduced the green resistance and a blue resistance, just try to make it as clear as possible. But here we have the junction at point A, and we have a current I flowing in it, and that branches off into three segments. Now keep in mind that all the resistors are all the same. Now each branch will then split off into two. And you could follow each one and see that it does indeed follow or split off into two branches, which then recombine. They then recombine. So right before junction B, I have three different resistors and I have current flowing in each branch. Now, in order to solve this problem, you might say, well, yeah, I know a lot of rules to simplify networks of resistors that are in series or that networks of resistors that are in parallel. However, if you try to apply those rules to this particular 2D kind of spaghetti, you're going to run into some difficulty. Because what you end up having are a series of nestled networks that are all in parallel to each other. And it's a little bit complicated to simplify using the conventional rules that we have in the textbook. So in order to solve this, what we're going to do is we're going to try to use symmetry arguments in order to simplify what's going on. So again, we're going to think about this for a minute and let's try to calculate the current in each segment. So we have a current I flowing in and again it's branching off into three equal segments and each segment has the same resistance. So that means that this current is going to be divided evenly so we're going to have a current I over 3 flowing through each one of these resistors. Now each one, or the current I over 3 then, reaches a junction and branches off into two segments. So that means the current I over 3 is then going to split evenly into two segments. So that means each of these six branches is going to have a current I over 6 flowing through it. Then these recombine, and everything combines into three branches that are in parallel, uh, which also means that the current through each one of these final three branches has to be I over 3, since I'm combining two currents of I over 6. And then everything combines at the end so that at point B I have the same current 
flowing out as I had flowing into junction A. So that is the argument you make by symmetry. And now in order to find the potential difference between points A and B, all you have to do is now just choose one of the paths. So the simplest one, I'm just going to choose the top path. I'm going to go from point A to point B, and let's look at the potential difference now between points A and point B. Now you can imagine if I connected this to a battery, that would produce a positive current uh, flowing in this direction, flowing into junction A. And I know that uh, the voltage of the battery is going to be equal to the potential drop across this equivalent resistor. And I could choose any branch I want here. So let's follow the top branch. So following the top branch, uh, the first thing I encounter is a resistance R, and I know the current is I over three flowing through this top resistor. Therefore, the voltage drop is given by R multiplied times I over three. The next thing I encounter, if I continue along the top branch, is going to be another resistance R there's going to be a voltage drop across that resistance and the magnitude of the voltage drop is going to be R uh, multiplied times the current flowing through there I over 6. Now I'm at junction labeled D. The last thing I'm going to encounter before I reach point B is another resistor and the current flowing through it is I over 3. Now if you combine everything what you're going to end up is I over 3 plus I over 6 plus I over 3. At the end of the day, if you add all these fractions now, you put everything over 6, you're going to end up getting 5 over 6R multiplied times the current equals to uh, the voltage difference across that entire network. So what does that mean? If I compare it to my simple equivalent circuit, you conclude that the equivalent resistance of this entire network is simply going to be 5 over 6 times uh, the resistance of one of those resistors. So there you have it folks, that's the equivalent resistance of a cube where I've placed resistors along the edges of the cube. If you have any questions don't hesitate to leave a comment or send me an email.